what you guys got another video here for you on how to record your screen on your PC or desktop uh, for free using OBS. Now, quite a few people uh, in my last video asked about uh, OBS, so I thought I'd make a quick video uh, on how to set this up. So OBS is open broadcaster software, which you can download for free for Windows, Mac OS, and also Linux. It's a free open source software for video recording and live streaming so if you're one of those live streamers or you just do video recording then this software is for you we'll be concentrating on the video recording uh, for this video so i'll show you how to set it up now i've already got it installed just go ahead and download it and get it installed onto your system so this is the actual software and we're going to take a look at it so down the bottom left hand corner here we have a scene and we also have sources. So the scenes are basically scenes that you can create on here. So you can flick between each scene. You can do scene one, two, and three. You can call them whatever you like and you can move up and down those scenes. On the right hand side here, we have sources. And this is basically where you can add a source for your uh, recording. So whether it be an audio input, maybe a microphone or something like that, audio app output capture. We also have a browser feature here, a color source, display capture. This is called display capture because it's going to capture your desktop, your screen on your desktop or your monitor. That's what it's going to capture. Anything on there, it will capture. So you can call this whatever you like. You can leave it dis display capture or you can name it desktop or whatever it is you want to uh, name it so you recognize it on the screen. So here we have uh, the capture software. It's working now. You can see we are recording what we're looking at, which is OBS. So if I drop this down to my taskbar, it would then show the desktop. So let me click OK here. Now I've turned this off at the moment, but you can toggle this on or off. Uh, so you can move these sources around in order to whatever you want to. Let me just make this a little bit smaller so you can see my background here on my desktop. There you go. So now you can see my desktop here. And if I started recording, it would record all the activity on my desktop, whether it would be me opening up the start button, opening up a browser, it will record all of that activity. So let's go ahead and add another source. You can add in here a game capture, um, or you can add in images, or you can add in image slideshows. If you want to, media source, or you can add in here a scene or text but we're going to add in a video capture device. Now this can be at your webcam or some sort of um, action cam or something like that, that you want to add in here or a camcorder, but I'm just going to put webcam and you'll see a big massive box up on here. Now, if I had my webcam plugged in, you'd be able to see my face and you'll be able to see me there, but obviously it's unplugged at the moment. That's why there's a red line there. But if I did put it in, you would definitely see me there. And you can now resize this and position it wherever you like on your uh, scene here where we want to show the actual uh, video recording that we're going to do. So if I had this down in the bottom right hand corner and open this back up, you can now see when I open up this here, you can now see it's in the bottom right hand corner. Now, if I created scenes, I could basically move certain uh, areas along on there. So maybe I wanted one on the right and one up the top left hand corner, and I can do that by adding a new scene in. Let me show you exactly what I mean here. So I'll quickly go ahead and create another scene here. So you'll be able to see what I mean uh, with that. You can turn these both off, makes it easier for me to show you. I'll create a new scene. So now I've got two scenes on here and I can toggle between both of these. So if I wanted to fade into another scene with my camera up the top left, I can do that. Uh, it, just in case it's uh, blocking something that I'm trying to show when I'm doing tutorials. So I could do that if I wanted to, or live stream. And you can do different types of scenes. Uh, maybe you want to fade into another camera review or something like that. You can do loads of different things here. So it's a very, very powerful piece of software. So that is uh, the scenes and the sources here. So you can see here we've got all of these here. And what you need to do next is set up your audio. So this is your audio section down here. So let me just toggle these off so I can show you the audio here. So the audio will be capturing your desktop audio, which is your desk. So if you was playing music on your computer, it will be recorded through your capture or a movie or something like that. It will capture it. 
You can also go into here and there's plenty of other options in here like advanced options, filters uh, and other things. That's a bit more out of the scope of this video because that's more advanced. If you want to see a more advanced video on OBS, let me know in the comments section below and I'll do that video for you. But again, we've got also mic and auxiliary here. This is going to allow you to add in some more uh, compression, expander, gain, uh, all this sort of stuff, limiter, noise gate, noise suppression, all the goodness that you want to add into your microphone to try and get better audio for when you're streaming or recording. And you can then add these filters in and tweak them. But that's more of an advanced video. So let me know if you want to see that and I'll do my best to make that video for you. Now you can see here down on the bottom right hand side, we have start streaming and start recording. We're going to be talking about recording in this video. Uh, the streaming is a whole new different ball game. So we're just concentrating on record here. If you want to see a streaming one, let me know in the comments section. So let's open up the settings pane. You can get to that in two different locations here. And we can also go to output. And this is what we're concentrating on, which is the output here. We're in simple mode at the moment. Now, the best way to set this up, if you're a new beginner to OBS, you can do this very, very quickly by using the wizard and it will scan your PC and find out what the best settings are for your system. So go up to the top and go to where it says tools and auto configuration wizard. This will then open up the auto configuration wizard and say optimize for streaming recording is secondary. So you don't want that if you're doing this for recording, that was for streaming. This is the one you need for recording. Optimize just for recording. I will not be streaming. That is the one you need to set it up for if you're doing this for screen capture and recording purposes. Go next and you'll now see it's give us the uh, current 1920 by 1080. That is my monitor screen here. If I had a 4K monitor, it would show that there. And also it's given us the FPS either 60 or 30 but preferred 60 when possible. You can leave that as is. And again, you can make changes yourself if you wanted to, but we're just going to go with this here. Now, this is the important bit here. These are the final results of what it's actually set. You can see here it's using a hardware uh, setting here for my encoder. Also, recording quality will set to high quality with medium file size. You can mess around with this in the advanced settings and also 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. That is what it's set for me under the wizard. And that will be good enough for most beginners or most people that don't want to delve into the advanced section and just want to record uh, something on their desktop. So let's start a recording here. I've gone down to the bottom right hand side and start recording. And I'll just do some stuff on the desktop here so you can get a general idea of what it does when it starts to record the screen. Now you can do pretty much anything on your desktop and it will record all of the activity and all of the sound that you are uh, recording here, depending on which way you set it up. So if I play the video here, it would start recording all of this information. If I wanted to do that, it would be able to record all of it, including the browser activity, uh, menu systems and stuff like that. Great for tutorials and great for showing people stuff. So you can see here, I'm going to go up here and we can now show all of the recordings. You click on this, it will take you to the location where all your recordings are stored. You can change that location if you wanted to. And you can see the recording we just done here. It's now playing here. If I have my camera on, it would show my camera in the bottom right hand corner with my face on it. And it will be recording all of the activity I did on the screen. Very simple and easy to do. Uh, you can then put this into an editing software and edit it even more if you wish. But basically, that's how you can record the screen in OBS. Very simple and easy to set up. So let's go back into the settings here. Just wanted to show you some other stuff that we can take a look at. So back in the output mode in the settings pane here, you're going to see we are in output mode, which is simple. That's because we use the wizard to set up our uh, settings here, but you can still tweak them a little bit here. You can change the recording path to where you want to store your files. Maybe it's on another drive. You can also make some other changes to audio bitrate here and get real uh, into a more advanced areas where you can change the audio quality and also the encoder. You can change it to software depending on what your system can handle. Normally, the wizard will be able to tell whether you can handle 
uh, that type of quality anyway. Also, there's some other areas down here, which is the recording quality, which you can then change yourself manually once you've got it set. So if you want to change this to a much more a higher level you can do but just be mindful that the higher you go the larger the file size and the better the quality so depending on how much space you have on your drive and what you're actually doing with these recordings will determine on what you're trying to set this as you can see here by the lossless quality which means it will basically be a full replica of what you're doing here the file sizes will be absolutely enormous and probably not worth setting it to the higher level because if it's just a screencast now again you can change the record format to whatever you feel like here whether it'll be mp4 there is a warning recording here to say that any save to mp4 or mov will be unrecoverable if the file cannot be finished or finalized so if you've got a pc crashed or something like that the file will be gone whereas if you set it to FLV or something like that, you can recover it. So depending on what you want to set yours to, if you're not going to be worried about that, you can set it to MP4, whatever you want to set yours as. We're still in simple mode here, and it does allow you to change the encoder if you wish to something that you want to change it to. Uh, personally, I would leave it on the hardware setting here because it's the more better one. If you've got a really good GPU, that's going to be helpful in that scenario. Again, if you went into advanced mode here, this is where things can get a little bit more tricky under the recording area here you can see things will get much more advanced and you would have to then start knowing what you're doing again i would really sort of make this another type of video because this is sort of out of the scope of the basic sort of setup for people that just want to get it set up to record the screen so you can go in here once i make changes here you'll see uh, this will open up some more options here so let me go ahead and make changes to this setting here so I'll quickly change this for you and you'll see as soon as I go into this setting here it will open up another load more settings here and this is where it gets a bit more complicated but anyway I'll leave the advanced settings alone for another video if you want to see those let me know in the comments section below for most people the wizard settings will be perfectly fine and you don't need to use anything other than those but for more advanced users, they can use the advanced settings. Anyway, I just want to say a big special thanks to all those people who have joined my YouTube members group. Your names are going up on the screen right now. I really do appreciate your support. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. And I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now.